8.6, Le Chatelier's Principle. So Le Chatelier's Principle um, and stresses will first be covered. So the de definition of Le Chatelier's Principle is when stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the reaction will shift or move in a direction that relieves or gets rid of the stress and therefore restores equilibrium. So basically when you apply stress, what it's doing is it's messing up the system's equilibrium or state of balance. So in order to restore that state of balance or that equilibrium, the reaction will shift in a certain direction so that it can get rid of that stress. Specifically, whenever a species is added, or whenever something is added, equilibrium will always shift away from what is added so that you can consume it and push it back down to what the equilibrium levels were. On the other hand, whenever something is removed from a system and disrupts equilibrium, equilibrium will shift towards what is removed so that you can produce more of it and restore it back up to what equilibrium levels were. Okay? Now, when I mentioned that stresses um, that are applied to equilibrium disrupt the system, what I meant by the stresses that you can apply to a system at equilibrium to make it shift or move in a certain direction I meant that the three applied stresses you can apply to a system at equilibrium to disrupt it are a change in concentration, a change in pressure, or a change in temperature. So make sure you know this first slide before you move on. So next, let's talk about the effect of stresses on concentration. So on the previous slide, we talked about when you disrupt a system at equilibrium, it will shift in a direction or move in a direction where it'll allow you to, um, res to restore equilibrium, right? Depending on which direction you shift towards, you will have changes in concentration in different ways. Specifically, whichever side you shift towards or go towards will tend to increase in concentration. That's because whenever you go towards a specific side, you're producing more of the substances on that side. So as a result of producing more substances on that side, when you go towards that side, you will increase in concentration for those substances. On the other hand, whichever side you go away from, will have the species decrease in concentration. That's because whichever side you go away from is whichever side you're consuming to restore equilibrium. So as a result of shifting away from a specific side, you're consuming it. So therefore, as a result of consuming the substances on the side you're going away from, you're decreasing their concentrations. So in short, just remember, whichever side you go towards will have increases in concentration for those species, whereas whichever side you go away from will dec decrease in concentration for for those species. All right, so let's see two examples. If you go towards the products, for example, the concentration of the products will increase because you're going towards the products. On the other hand, the concentration of the reactants will decrease since you're going away from them. All right? Next, if we um, go towards the reactants, on the other hand, the concentration of the products will decrease since you're going away from the products, whereas the concentration of the reactants will increase since you're going towards the reactants. All right? So from these first two slides, just make sure you remember the following. First of all, equilibrium will always um, shift away from what is added because um, when you add something, you have to get rid of it. How do you do that? You have to shift away from it so that you bring, consume it and bring it back down to equilibrium levels. On the other hand, when you, whenever you remove something, equilibrium must shift towards that side of what is removed because when you shift towards the side of what is removed, you're producing more of it and bringing it back up to what the equilibrium levels were. Okay? Secondly, I want you to know that whichever side you go towards, the concentration of the the concentration of the species on the side that you go towards will increase in concentration. On the other hand, whichever side you go away from, the concentration of the species on the side you're going away from will decrease in concentration. So make sure you remember these four things, all right, before you move on. Now let's talk about the different stresses. The first stress that can happen to cause equilibrium to shift in a specific direction is changing the concentration. And when, when you change the concentration, what I want you to do is to circle the species added or removed because circling and focusing on the species added or removed will allow you to determine which direction you should go from there. Okay? So let's talk about the specific changes in concentration. If you increase the concentration of a species, what you have to do is you have to shift away from the side with the species added to consume it. The reason for that is because you have too much of the species. If you increase the concentration, that's the problem. That's the stress to add. So to get rid of that stress, you have to shift away from the side with the species added to consume it by using it up. All right? On the other hand, if you decrease the concentration, the problem is you have too little of it. So to restore the concentration back up to equilibrium levels, since the concentration is too low, that's the stress, you have to shift towards the side with the species removed so that you can make more of it later and restore it back up to equilibrium levels. Okay? 
So in short, whenever you increase the concentration, you have too much of something. So to relieve that stress, you have to shift away from the side with the species added so that you can use it up and bring it back down to equilibrium levels. On the other hand, if you decrease the concentration of a species, you have too little of it, and that's the stress that disturbs equilibrium. So to relieve that stress, you have to shift towards the side with the species removed so that you can make more of it and restore it back up to equilibrium levels. All right, so there you go. Add something, you have to shift away from it so that you can uh, use it up. On the other hand, if you remove something, you have to shift equilibrium towards it so that you can restore it back up to equilibrium levels. So let's see two examples here. In this first example, we have Cu2 plus Aq plus 2OH minus Aq produces CuOH2 solid. Here what we're adding is OH minus. So we have to circle OH minus since that's the species we're focusing on. And since we're adding OH minus, the problem is we are increasing the concentration of OH minus Aq. So the problem, with the, the problem that it does to equilibrium is it increases the concentration too high. Obviously, to address an increase in concentration, what we have to do is shift away from the side with the species added, meaning shift away from the left, which contains OH minus, so that we can consume it and bring it back down to equilibrium levels. So the direction is the reaction shifts away from the OH minus AQ towards the right. And as a result of that, since you're shifting towards the right, you're shifting towards the CuOH2 solid. Since you're shifting towards the CuOH2 solid, you are producing more of it. So therefore, the amount of CuOH2 solid increases since you're going towards it. On the other hand, since you're shifting away from the Cu2 plus Aq, the concentration of Cu2 plus Aq decreases since you're going away from it. All right, so those are the effects of concentration, and we have the direction. So for every stress, I want you to circle it and decide which direction you're going, and then determine what the effects of concentration are. If you add, if you add a species, you have to shift away from it to consume it, such as in this case. That means that whichever side you shift towards, that the concentration of species on that side increases, whereas the side you're shifting away from, the concentration of species on that side decreases. Okay? Our next, ex uh, sorry, our next example is C coh 2 plus plus 4Cl minus Aq produce it, uh, is an equilibrium, sorry, with COCl4 2 minus Aq and 6H2O liquid. The stress here we have is removing coh 2 2 plus Aq. So let's circle this. What we're doing is we're decreasing the concentration of this species that we circled, coh 2 2 plus Aq, by removing it. The problem here that we have in terms of stress of equilibrium is we have too little of it. Since we have too little of the species, what we have to do is, um, since we have too little, we have to restore it. How do we do that? We have to shift towards the side with the species removed, coh 2 2 plus. All right? In other words, we're shifting to the left to restore it. Since we're shifting to the left, what we're doing is we're shifting towards 4Cl minus Aq. Since we're shifting towards 4Cl minus Aq, that means that its concentration increases since we're shifting towards it and making more of it. On the other hand, since we're shifting away from CoCl4 2 minus Aq and 6H2O liquid, the concentration or amounts of CoCl4 2 minus Aq and the amount of H2O liquid will both decrease since we go away from them, meaning when we go away from them, these two, towards the left, we're using these up and therefore decreasing their concentrations. All right, so that's really all you got to do. Just circle the species you're focusing on, um, decide which direction you're going in, and then know what happens to the concentrations. If you increase the concentration of a species, shift away from it, since you have too much of it, so that you can consume it and use it up and bring it back down to equilibrium levels. If you decrease the concentration of something, however, there's too little of it, so to restore equilibrium, you have to shift towards the side with the species removed to produce more of it and restore it back up to equilibrium levels. Okay? So stress number two is a change in temperature. Whenever you change temperature, what you have to do is go into the um, reaction or equation and you have to circle heat or energy in the question. Remember, heat or energy is usually in, en in units of Kj or J, or it can be simply written as heat. So if you see Kj, J, or heat in the equation when you change temperature, just circle that Kj, J, or the word heat or energy in the equation so that you, you can use that to decide which direction you should shift in. All right? The two disturbances for changes in temperature can be an increase and a decrease in temperature. So the first, pro the first disturbance is an increase in temperature. If you increase temperature of a system, the problem there is it is too hot and you have too much heat. If it's too hot and you have too much heat, what you must do in that case is you must um, absorb that heat since it's too hot from the surroundings. So in other words, you have to shift in the endothermic direction to absorb the heat since it's too hot in the surroundings. And what I mean by endothermic direction is you need to shift away from the side with the heat 
so that you can consume it and bring the temperature back down to equilibrium levels. On the other hand, if you decrease the temperature, the problem with that is it is too cold. The temperature is below equilibrium levels. So with that problem, it is too cold in the surroundings. So what you need to do to bring the temperature back up to equilibrium levels is you need to release heat to the surroundings to make it hot again, right back up to um, equilibrium levels. So what you have to do, in other words, since you're releasing heat to the environment to make it hot again, is you have to shift in the exothermic direction since you're releasing heat to the surroundings. What I mean by exothermic direction is you need to shift towards the side with the heat since you want to make more of the heat by shifting towards the side with the heat. And as a result of shifting towards the side with the heat, which is in the exothermic direction, you will wind up making more heat and releasing more heat to the environment and bringing the temperature back up to equilibrium levels. All right. So in short, if you have to change the temperature as a disturbance for equilibrium, you have to circle heat or energy in the equation and decide which direction you're going in. If you're increasing the temperature, it's too hot. So to bring that temperature back down to equilibrium levels, you have to shift in the endothermic direction so you can absorb the heat from the environment. And by endothermic direction, I mean away from the side with the heat so that you can consume and bring the temperature back down to equilibrium levels. If you decrease the temperature, it is too cold. It's below the temperature for equilibrium. So what you have to do to bring the temperature back up to equilibrium levels is you have to shift in the exothermic direction so that you release heat to the environment and bring it back up to equilibrium temperature. And what I mean by exothermic direction is you, you shift towards the side with the heat so that you can produce more of the heat. And therefore, as a result of producing more heat in the environment, bring the temperature in the surroundings back up to equilibrium levels. Okay? So that's all you got to do. So let's try this with two examples. In the first example, we have um, two N2 gas and 3H2 gas on the left side in equilibrium with 2NH3 gas and heat on the right side. In this case, our stress is increased temperature. So what you're doing by increasing temperature is adding heat. So obviously, what we're going to be focusing on is we have to circle heat here. We're increasing the heat. The problem with increasing the heat is it becomes too hot. So to, um, so to lower the temperature back down to equilibrium levels, what we have to do is we have to shift in the direction that will absorb the heat from the surroundings and bring it back down to equilibrium levels. In other words, we have to shift in the endothermic direction away from the heat. In this case, the endothermic direction that goes away from the heat on the right is to the left. So if we add too much heat, we have to shift away from it to get rid of it. So we have to shift in the endothermic direction away from the heat, which is in this case to the left. And in this case, since we're shifting to the left, we are going towards the N2 and 3H2 gas on the left, and we are going away from the 2NH3 gas on the right. Since we're going towards the N2 gas and the 3H2 gas on the left side, um, we are increasing their concentration since we're going towards them. All right, And we know that whenever we go towards a specific side, we're producing more of the uh, species on that side, so therefore their concentrations must increase. So the amounts of N2 gas and H2 gas must increase in this case on the left side since we're going towards the left side and we're producing more of them. On the other hand, since we're going away from the side with NH3, meaning we're going away from the right side, the amount of NH3 gas must decrease since we're going away from it. Since we're going away from the NH3 gas, its concentration or amount must decrease because if we're going away from it, that, what that means is we're consuming it. So this concentration decreases since we're going away from it, while these concentrations, N2 and 3H2 gas, are increasing since we're going towards them. Okay? So that's it. The next example, we have C2H4 gas in equilibrium with, on the right side, 2C solid and 2H2 gas and 52.4 kilojoules. So in this case, what we're doing is we're decreasing temperature. In other words, we're removing heat. So we had to circle the heat, 52.4 kJ, in this reaction. Now, what we, since we're decreasing heat or removing heat by decreasing the temperature, I'm going to put a down arrow next to the heat to indicate that. The problem with decreasing heat or decreasing the temperature is it is too cold. And in order to restore that temperature back up to equilibrium levels, what you have to do is you have to release heat to the environment to bring the temperature back up to equilibrium levels. In other words, you have to shift the reaction in the exothermic direction. Um, in other words, you have to shift towards the side with the heat. In this case, if you shift towards the side with the heat, you're shifting to the right side um, of this equilibrium reaction to the right. And what you're doing here is if you're shifting to the right, since you're shifting towards the right side, what's happening is the concentration of the species on the right sides are increasing since you're going towards the right side. Specifically, the concentration of 2C solid and H2 gas will increase since you're going towards the right side. And since you go towards the right side, the concentration of the species on the right side, 2C solid and 
H2H2 gas will increase since you're producing more of them when you go towards the right side. On the other hand, since you're going away from the left side here, C2H4 gas, um, its amount will or concentration will decrease when you go away from it. And that's because when you go away from this um, when you go away from a specific side, the species on the side that you're going away from will decrease in concentration because when you shift away from it, all you're doing is consuming it. All right. So as a result, when you um, decrease the temperature, you have to shift towards the side with the heat in the exothermic direction, toward the right in this case. Since you're shifting to the right here, you're producing more C solid and more H2 gas, so their concentrations will increase. On the other hand, since you're shifting away from C2H4 gas, you are um, consuming it, so its concentration will decrease when you go away from the left side. All right? So that's how you do that for this um, example. So that's really it. Our final stress is a change in pressure. And when you deal with changes in pressure, you have to circle the side with more particles, and based on the side with the more particles, you have to decide which direction you'll go in. The two stresses you'll deal with in relation to pressure are an increase in pressure or a decrease in pressure. When you increase pressure, the problem there is, think about increasing pressure as increasing the amount you press down on a container. If you increase the amount you press down on a container, you're squeezing too many particles into too small of a space and everything becomes jam-packed. You don't want it to be crowded, though, because it's way too crowded. It's more crowded than equilibrium is. So to um, decrowd it back down to equilibrium levels, what you need to do is you have to shift away from the side with more particles. In other words, you have to shift away from the side that's crowded so that you can relax it and make it more spacey. All right? Also, if you have to compare a solution versus a gas, you do not want gas when there's increased pressure. So when you increase pressure when you're comparing solution versus gas, you have to go towards the side of the solution because you do not want gas when you increase pressure. All right? Um, on the other hand, when you decrease pressure, you're making it way too spacious. There's too much space and there are too few particles. All right? Because if you like lift up your hand from a container, there's way too much room for the particles to move around. All right, so since there's way too much space and way too few particles, what you want to do is you want the complete opposite of that. You want less space and more particles. All right? So um, you to, in this case, you have to shift towards the side with more particles to counteract that stress. And if you're comparing gas versus solution, when you decrease pressure, you obviously will want more gas to re restore it back up to equilibrium. So when you decrease pressure, you must shift towards the side with the gas. Okay? So in short, just to summarize this, if you increase the pressure, you have too little space and too many particles. So in order to relieve that stress of too, mu too many particles and too little space, you have to make more space and make less particles by shifting away from the side with more particles so that becomes less crowded. And when you're comparing solution versus gas, you obviously want the side with solution. On the other hand, if you decrease pressure, there is um, too much room and too few particles. So to counteract that stress, of too much room and too few particles, you have to go towards the side with more particles so that it um, becomes less spacious and so that there are more particles. And also when you're comparing gas versus solution, when you decrease pressure, you should always go towards the side with the gas. All right? So just make sure you remember that. So let's see two examples here. Our first example is N2 gas plus 3H2 gas is in equilibrium with 2NH3 gas and heat. So um, in this first example, our stress is increasing pressure. And if we increase in pressure, um, what we have to do is we have to circle the side with more particles. This one is 1N2 particle and 3H2 particles, or 4, whereas this side only has 2NH3 particles. So we're going to circle the side with more particles, which is this side. If you increase the pressure, the problem is there are way too many particles here. And to relieve that stress of having way too many particles in way too little space, what you have to do is you have to make more space and make less particles. So you have to shift away from the side with the greater number of particles, meaning you have to, in this case, you have to shift away from the left side because there are too many particles there. In other words, you have to go towards the right side in this example. Since you're shifting towards the right side, the concentration of the particles on the right side will increase since you're shifting towards the right side. So the concentration of NH3 gas on the right side will increase since you're shifting towards the right side, and the therefore the concentration of the species on the right side, which is NH3, will increase in concentration. On the other hand, since you're shifting away from the left side, the concentration of species on the left side will decrease since you're going away from them and consuming them. So in other words, the amounts of N2 and H2 gas will decrease um, in this example since you're going away from these two species.
and therefore you're consuming them and lowering their concentrations, all right? Our next example is 2CO gas and O2 gas is in equilibrium with 2CO2 gas and 566 kilojoules. In this case, we have the stress of decreasing pressure. So what we have to do again is we have to circle the side with more particles. Here we have two COs and plus one O2 or three particles total. Whereas on the right side, we only have two CO2 gas. So we have to circle the side with more particles, which is the left side, two CO plus O2 gas, which has three particles. So what we have to do is in this case, we're decreasing pressure. Our problem here is we have, we have uh, too much space and too few particles if we decrease pressure, okay? So what we have to do to relieve that stress of having um, too few particles and too, too much space is we have to shift towards the side with more particles and less space. In this case, the side with more particles and therefore less space is to the left. So we're shifting to the left here. Since we're shifting to the left here, the, the, uh, left, the particles on the left side will increase in concentration, and that's because whichever side you go towards, the concentration of the particles on the side that you go towards will increase concentration since you're producing more of those particles, whereas the concentration of the particles on the side you're shifting away from will decrease in concentration since you're shifting away from them and therefore consuming or using them up. All right? So in this case, you're going to the left towards the side with more particles so that you can get more particles and less space to re resolve your stress. So here um, you have, uh, since you're shifting towards the left, the amounts of the particles on the left side, which are CO gas and O2 gas, will increase since you go towards the left side anyway, and therefore you will produce more of them and therefore increase concentrations. On the other hand, since you're shifting away from the right side, which has CO2, the amount of CO2 gas will decrease since as you go away from the CO2 gas on the right side, what you're doing is you're consuming it and therefore decreasing its concentration like this. Okay, so there you go. Our final example is in equilibrium between CO2 gas and CO2 AQ. If we increase pressure, obviously, we want to go towards the side with fewer particles if we increase pressure, and we also want to go towards solutions over gases, because if you increase pressure, you don't want more gas, you want less gas. So obviously, in this case, since we have CO2 gas and CO2 AQ, when we increase the pressure, we don't want gas, we want the aqueous instead. So the reaction in this case had to shift towards the solution, which is shifting towards the right, the CO2 aqueous on the right. So the reaction shifts to the right, producing more CO2 AQ, all right, since um, the aqueous solution is on the right side. Sorry, this should say right side, not left side. My bad. But just make sure you correct that on your uh, notes. I'm, I apologize for that. But you're shifting towards the right. Therefore, since you're shifting towards the right, you're, producing the co you're increasing the concentration of the species on the side, meaning you're increasing the concentration of the CO2 AQ on the right side. On the other hand, the CO2 gas on the left side will decrease in concentration since you're shifting away from it, which means that you're consuming or using it up. Okay? Finally, let's talk about the addition of a catalyst. When you... Um, at a catalyst, the catalyst will increase the reaction rate and decrease the activation energy, like you know, of both the forward and reverse reaction. Since you increase the reaction rate but decrease the activation energy of both the forward and reverse reaction, what they do is if you increase the rate of the forward reaction or reverse reaction equally, they'll cancel each other out. And as a result of canceling each other out, overall there will be no change in concentration or even rate because catalyzing both the forward and reverse reactions makes them cancel out, so the concentration doesn't change and the rate does not change either. Okay. Now let's really quickly summarize what we've learned in this lesson. To solve Le Chatelet's principal problem, step one, all you have to do is circle what you're focusing on. If it's temperature, circle heat. If it's pressure, circle the side with more particles. And if it's concentration, circle the side with spe the species added or removed. Step two, you have to state the direction of the reaction and mention away from or towards in your answer as needed. If you increase the temperature, you have to go in the end endothermic direction away from the heat. If you decrease the temperature, you have to go in the exothermic direction towards the heat. If you increase the concentration, you have to go away from the side of the species added. And if you decrease the concentration, you have to go towards the side of the species removed. For pressure, if you increase the pressure, you have to go away from the side of more particles, or you have to go towards the solution if it's solution versus gas. If you decrease the pressure, you have to go towards the side of more particles, or towards the gas if you have solution versus gas. Finally, in step three, you have to state how the concentration changes on each side using increases in concentration or decreases in concentration as an expression. All right, so always, always know that the species on the side you go towards will always increase in concentration since you're producing more of them. On the other hand, the species on the side that you're going away from will always decrease in concentration since you're consuming them and bringing their concentrations down. Okay, so I would really make sure that you wrote down the notes from the previous slides, but really use this as your guide to memorize and study for this lesson. This is really the only slide you need, but make sure you apply them with the next few examples. All right, 
So number one, it says explain what happens when temperature increases. I'm just going to circle the heat here. Since the temperature is increasing, it's too hot. So what you have to do, let's remember, is you have to shift in the endothermic direction away from the heat. In this case, shifting in the endothermic direction means shifting to the right away from the heat. Since you're shifting away from the heat to the right, what happens is since you're shifting away from N2 and O2 gas, they will decrease in concentration since as you shift away from them, away from the heat on the left, you are consuming them. On the other hand, the concentration of NO gas will increase since you go towards the right when you, when you um, add the heat. And as a result of go going to the right towards um, NO gas, you're producing more of it. Okay? So the explanation here is increased temperature, you go in the endothermic direction away from the side with the heat. Number two says explain what will happen when the amount of C solid increases. So I'm going to circle the species added, which is C solid. Now what happens here is if you add C solid, the problem is you have too much of it. So what you have to do to relieve that stress is you have to shift away from the species added C solid. So in this case, you have to shift the reaction to the right. So since you're shifting to the right, what you are doing is, since you're shifting to the right, you're increasing the concentration of species on the right side, which is specifically, you're increasing the concentration of CO2 gas since you go to the right and make producing more of it. On the other hand, the concentration um, of O2 gas will decrease, in this case, since you're going away from the species added on the left, which is C solid, and you're also going away from the O2. Since you're going away from the O2, gas as well. What you're doing is when you go away from it, it will decrease in concentration because you are consuming the O2 when you go away from it. All right, so the explanation here is if you add a substance, you shift away from the side of the species added. Number three says explain what will happen when the pressure of the system increases. So when, pressure, when we're talking about pressure changes, we've got to decide which, which side sorry, has more particles. This side has 1C3H8 and 5 O2s or 6 total particles. On this side, we have 3 CO2s and 4 H2Os or 7 total particles. We have to circle the side with more particles, which is the right side here. When the pressure of the system increases, um, you, what the problem there is you have too many particles in too little space. To relieve that problem of too many particles in too little space, you have to shift towards the side with less particles and therefore more space. So this reaction must shift away from the side with the greater number of particles. So we shift away from the side with too many particles, which is, which is away from the right in this case, and instead we shift towards the left. All right? So um, since we're shifting towards the left here, the concentrations of C3H8 and 5O2 will increase in concentration since you go to the left towards them. And when you go towards them, what you're doing is producing more of them. On the other hand, the concentrations of CO2 gas and 4H2O liquid will decrease in amounts since you go away from the side with more particles, which is you shift away from the right. And when you shift away from the right, you're decreasing the concentration of the species on the right because you're effectively consuming them. All right, and using them up and decreasing their concentrations back down to equilibrium levels. So um, the explanation here is you, um, if you increase pressure, you have to shift away from the side with greater particles, and that's really it. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, you can re really re just review these sample questions in part two and part three on your own. Make sure that you memorize the answer, the logistics of what happens to the concentration, and the explanation for it. And please complete the rest of the homework questions for tonight's homework for tomorrow's class. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.